Hey guys, welcome back. What we're going to do here is we're going to do another video in regards to World of Warcraft leveling. Now, 1 to 85 sucks to level um, without any kind of perks. Even with BOA gear and guild perks, it still sucks to level. Once you hit that wrath wall, it just takes forever. And what we're going to do is we're going to use Blizzard's Black Friday sale along with Refer a Friend. Okay, now the Black Friday sale, you can get Vanilla, BC, Wrath, and Cataclysm for $5. Okay, it's a full-fledged account upgraded to Cataclysm for 5 bucks. That's insane. So what we're going to do is we're going to use that and the new Refer a Friend system that has been buffed to 85 as well. Now, Refer a Friend, there are some downsides, I should say, to trying to find someone to refer. I mean, if you try to do a friend that's been playing for a while... They get, an, they get another account with a bunch of characters that they have to pay to transfer to their mains. That's $25 a pop. And if you try to just find someone off of trade chat on a high pop server or something, you have to trust that they'll pay for it. And not a lot of people want to do that. There's really no benefit, unless you're a brand new player, to get referred. You don't get much out of it. But doing the referring... You get extra levels granted to you. You get a bunch of characters. It's, it's awesome. So what we're going to do is instead of referring someone else, we're going to prefer ourselves. Now I will show you how to do that if you don't know. And once I do that, we'll get back to this. Okay, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show those that don't know how to recruit a friend yourself, okay? So you're going to log into WoW, and you're going to open up your friends list, and then over here you're going to see a tab called Recruit a Friend. You're going to click on this, and then in here, what you would normally do is put your friend's email, but you're going to put your main battle.net email here, okay? And then give yourself a little note, you know, it's like, hey, let's level some tunes, or whatever, it doesn't really matter. And then send the invitation. Now you'll get an email, and it'll give you the links to start up the recruiter friend. That's it. It's really simple. Okay, guys. Once you have the email sent to you from the referrer friend that you did, you want to open it up, and then go and merge this new account with your main battle.net account. Okay? For two reasons. One, you get to keep all your mounts and fancy titles. Two... You can now mail yourself BOA gear, okay? Which is the key to this. The fastest way to level is with the BOA gear, guild perks, and the refer friend, okay? So what you're going to do is once you have that account merged, you need to actually start getting a dual boxing program, okay? Now I have a free one here for you. But if you want to get a boxer or a pwn boxer, go right ahead. But, um, this is a free program, and it works just as well for what you need it for. So, you can save yourself 50 bucks. So, hotkeynet.com is where you need to go. I will put a link in the description. But, right here at the front, you can already see, they have a quick start guide that I do recommend that you read. It's pretty in-depth, and for someone who's never messed with dual boxing programs, it could be a giant ball of gibberish. But, um, it's pretty simple once you get the hang of it. Now, what you're going to do here is you're going to go to the free tab, uh, free download tab, click on it, and then you're going to download their current build, whatever it may be when you see this. And it is required that you have Windows XP, Vista, or 7. I'm not exactly sure if it's working on Windows 8 yet. Um, I thought I read something online that said it's buggy on that one. So, if you have Windows 8, sorry. But, um... Right now, what you want to do is download this onto your desktop or anywhere on your computer where you can find it. And then, once you do that, I'll get back into that program a little bit more, and then I'll teach you about it, okay? Okay, so now that you have HotKeyNet installed to your computer, we're going to go over a few things before this, okay? One, HotKeyNet does not work in full screen mode, okay? So you're going to have to go into your World of Warcraft and change the set, uh, system settings to 
window mode. Okay. Once you do that, just close out, and then you'll be good. Okay. Another thing with this program is that the scroll lock key is your on and off button to the entire program. Okay. So when it's on, you're broadcasting keystrokes. When it's off, you're not. Pretty simple. Okay. Another thing is that since it's a free program, there's always a catch. It's script based. So if you don't know what scripts are, it's no big deal. Um, they're really simple to learn with this program. And there's a lot of form help. Also this quick start guide, like I said, you'll learn them pretty quickly. But I'm going to go through them with you so you know exactly what to do. Um, this may be a little lengthy. But I want you to know, I want to get you in to dual boxing as quickly as possible. So I'm going to go over how to do this. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up HotkeyNet, okay? Now once you open it, the pop-up before this may come up, just close it and get this. So it's really kind of weird. You don't see an on button or anything like that, like I said, but the scroll lock is your on and off key. So, but this right up here, the last key press is going to be important. It'll tell you the name of the keys you press. So whatever key you press, it'll give you the name, which is important for scripts. Okay. So if you need to know the name of a key, press the key. It'll tell you what it was and then use that letter or word or whatever it is in your scripts. So what is a script if you don't know what one is? Um, basically it's a notepad document with information that tells this program what to do. Okay. So it does come with a sample. HotkeyNet does come with a sample, but it sucks. I would not use it. And I will be posting in the comments a link to a paste bin. So you can copy this text document that I'm going to open up and show you how to edit for my exact keys. Now, I have given way more than you need. I basically opened up the entire keyboard mostly. So you'll have more room to play with. So I will make sure I put that in the description and uh, so you guys can have it. So we'll go from there. I'm going to open up this profile and we'll work from this. Okay, so now we're going to open up the text document, and I'm going to go over what you need to know so you can edit this thing quickly. All right. Basically, what we're going to do is right here is where your World of Warcraft execute file is located. Okay. Mine is uh, installed in my regular C drive in my, on my SSD, so you need to change this if it's not installed in your regular program files. Uh, this script will not work because it can't find your file if it's not located here. So make sure you change this. Now another thing is right here, defined hotkeys for all key combinations. This is going to be the list of all the buttons you want this program to broadcast to the other programs. Okay, so everything in here, all your A through Z, all your numbers, I have a Razor Naga, some do, some don't. Um, numpad uh, 0 through 9, the tab, escape, shift left, you know, just a bunch, of, you know, your space bar for jumping, you know, that kind of thing. But right here, you're going to see a section called S accept, okay? E, S, and F, okay? Those are my movement keys forward and strafe right and strafe left. I do not backpedal and I do not keyboard turn, so I only use three keybinds. Um, what we're going to do here is these can be changed. Okay, You can change these all you want. I'm going to open up another one here, uh, the same document, so I can edit this and then close it out without doing too, great, too much crazy stuff here. Okay, so we'll go back down here. If you use a different key binding for movement, okay, let's say you use the standard WASD, okay, you're going to go in here and you're going to hit W, and then you're going to hit A, S, comma, space, and D, okay, that's how you do this, W, A, S, D, you just change the letters, but it has to be done in this exact fashion, you have to have the W, comma, and a space letter for everyone. 
Except for the last one here, you need to not put something and just leave the semicolon there. You need to just leave that there. Um, now that's not it. You're going to have to come down here as well in the movement hotkeys section and you're going to have to change these to what these are. So you can select them, copy, come down here, and then paste. Again, the D does not have a, doesn't need a comma. It just ends at the bracket, okay? And it has to be butted up like this. So, basically, that's it. And I mean, you also have keybind, or other key bindings like shift A through Z and shift numbers 0 through 9. So, like I said, I've opened up a ton of key bindings here for you to use. Um, more than the sample gave you. So if you want to add something else, by all means, just go in here to the program, and right up here under last key press, like I said, hit the button you want, whatever it may be. Now it will beep, it's no big deal. And then find the name, and then come back into this document here. And I would recommend doing it right after this minus here. Like let's say we want to add uh, Z, okay, so we'll hit space capital Z, comma. I mean, and that's it. That's all you do. You just, that's how you add stuff to this program. So, but like I said, it has to be put into this section here if you want the bind to be transmitted, okay? If you don't, it won't read it, and it won't transmit it, and then you'll end up having, okay, let's say you have WASD not broadcasting here, but you change something here, and your guy will just, will only move to the right. It so, anyways, that's all you want to know here, is just this section of information right here. This hotkey, uh, defined hotkeys, this is where you change them. And then, if you use WASD, you need to change them here too. Alright. Now, I'm going to explain something else here. It'll be a little bit more towards classes with AOE, okay? It's my only pet peeve with this program is that AOE spells that have targeting reticles on the ground like uh, Hunter Trap, Mages uh, Frost Nova, uh, or Pet Nova, Druid's Hurricane, you know, Healing Rain, that kind of thing. Anything that has a reticule on the ground is going to be a little bit difficult to cast on the second account. Uh, Isk Boxer and Pwn Boxer all have like a ghosting ability where the mouse follows on the general vicinity of the other screens. So you hit one button and it like mimics the area. Well, this one doesn't have it on all the time. You're going to have to enable it for everything. So like let's say you have Blizzard on number two on both accounts, okay? Well, what you'll have to do is you'll have to hit number two to activate the cursor. And then you'll have to hold the tilde key, which is the number left of number one and above tab. And you have to hold it and then double click the left mouse button. Now, it, it can't, it doesn't sound that hard, but it gets kind of tedious after a while. And sometimes it glitches out and, um, your mouse will switch from the main screen, your, your main window to the second one. It will just stick there for some reason. But, you know, one little hiccup out of an, out of all this stuff, and it's free, I'll give it to it. Hey, that's no big deal. So, um, other than that, really, that's all you need to know. You, d you just need to know that you need to change this file. This is where you add new keys. And if you don't want them to be added, you make sure you add them to this accept section. Okay. So, if you don't want a key... Uh, let's say we don't want Q to be transmitted, okay? You just hit comma, space, capital Q. That's it. I mean, that, that's how you you change it, okay? And, um, okay, so I'm going to also teach you how to load up this program, how to start it, okay? So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to close this out. I don't want to save it. All right, once you come over here and you load the script, that I gave you, or that you made, or whatever. <clears throat> Once you load it, it'll be right here. Now, all of the key binding combinations, if your scroll lock is off, will not transmit, okay? So you need to turn on scroll lock. And then what you need to do, 
to load up your first two World of Warcraft accounts, you need to hit Control, Alt, and L. Okay? And then, with scroll lock on, Control, Alt, and L. And it will instantly load up two World of Warcraft accounts. Okay? Like I said, make sure that you're in window mode. At the start of this, make sure you're in window mode on your settings in WoW. And then load it up. And then, once you reorganize the screens, if I have three 24-inch wide screens, so I have plenty of space on my desktop, but for those that are running on one screen, you will have to resize them once you get to, into a comfortable section or wherever you want them to be. Um, they do not have to be the same size, you, so you can mess around with it. And once you figure that out, you're going to click on the main screen, the one that you're going to be focusing on with your main character, okay? And you're going to hit, con with scroll lock still on, Control r Okay, what this is going to do, it's going to rename each of those windows to WoW 1 and WoW 2. Now, we're going to open up that document again, and I'm going to show you. Right here. It says right here at the top, okay? Control-R, with scroll lock on, will rename each of the WoW windows okay, to WoW 1 and WoW 2. What this does is this enables the program on both of those windows. Okay, so it it's telling this is telling the program these are the windows I want to send this stuff to. All of this, you know, key bindings stuff, or all these these binds. That's what it's telling it to do. If you do not rename your windows, even if you have scroll lock on, it will not broadcast to the second account. Okay? So you want to make sure you do that. You want to make sure you rename the windows each time. Okay? So pretty much that's it. Um, I know it was kind of rushed, and I'm a little OCD, so I may have kind of emphasized the little sections too much. But that's basically what I—that's how you get started. Okay, uh, that's how you, you know, get this all working. And I will be back to explain a little bit more about dual boxing and see if I can actually hook up my uh, two hunters that I'm going to make to give you guys a tutorial on how to start dual boxing. Okay, I'll be back. Okay. So now that we have a hotkey net set up with a profile and everything, it's time to start it. Let's, let's get into WoW and mess around with dual boxing, okay? So basically what I like to use to make things quicker, you know, is use classes that are ranged. You can use melee classes, but they're kind of complicated to dual box. Uh, hunters, Moonkins, Mages, Elemental Shamans, they are a lot simpler, and they are a lot more powerful. So, basically what we're going to do here, is we're going to go over the basics for dual boxing. Okay, I'm going to give you the macros you're going to need, and the setup you're going to need. Okay, Basically, um, I'm using add-ons, I've got dominoes for action bars, and I'm using uh, stuff unit frames, so you can get those on Curse. I'll make sure I put them in the description so you guys can get them. But um, what we're going to do here is the first thing we're going to do is I've already made a quick and simple macro for both of these. I'm broadcasting keystrokes right now with scroll, scroll lock on, and I have renamed both my windows. So right now, both accounts are sharing uh, keybinds. So what we're going to do here so I'm going to turn scroll lock off so I don't transmit to the other account right now, but I'm going to show you some macros here that you're going to need to have. Okay, now I'll make sure I put these in the descriptions as well so you guys can just copy paste them instead of actually trying to copy them off of the window. But um, basically, I have a button that is a yes all button. This accepts group invites, this um, accepts trades, uh, raid, uh, looking for dungeon kind of things. It, it's really good to have. It also accepts any kind of quest or whatever. It's really cool. So I'll make sure I put this one because this, this is a must have. Another add-on that you're going to need to have for dual boxing by yourself is Auto Quest 2. I'll make sure I put a link for that as well. It basically says yes to every quest you touch. Um, it's 
pretty sweet. So, um, other than that, I think that's about done with add-ons. Uh, let's go into key bindings real quick, and I'm going to show you a key binding that I want you to have um, enabled on all your characters. It's interact with target. Right here. Now see, I have mine set to 6. Okay. Well, you can set it to whatever you want, but what this does, it basically mimics on a keybind your right click or your mouse. Okay. So if you want to talk to a merchant or something like that, that's what it does. Now, another thing, once you have that bound to something, you want to go into interface and mouse and then enable click to move. Okay, you can do this click to move on the following tune. See, my two um, hips is the main character and legs is just follows me. So she can have the click to move enabled on her, but I don't have to have it on mine. But basically, what it does is if she assists my target and it's a merchant or a quest giver, and I hit um, the six key with click to move enabled she will run to that quest giver or merchant by herself. So it's really cool. Uh, that's just a little trick you can use. So in case, you know, you're trying to turn in a quest and the quest giver is too far away, so you don't have to, like, drag her to it, this is an easy way for her just to walk to it by herself. Now what we're going to do here is I'm going to give you the basic layover of macros for dual boxing. Okay? So... Let's open up our macros again. All right, we're gonna hit a new one. Now I like using the uh, period and the red question mark because you can go show tool, and then it will automatically put the icon of the uh, spell that you're using in there for you if you don't know. So now we're gonna do a slash assist. My main character's name is Hips, so I'm gonna put that name in there, and then cast uh, slash cast whatever spell. So you can go into your spell books here and let's, okay, I have arcane shot and you can like shift click it in there or whatever you would want to do, type it, write it. Um, but that is basically your bread and butter macro right there. That is what you're going to have to put on every single spell for um, for your following tune. So legs will have this macro on her bar and it will mimic the same, so I have uh, Arcane Shot on R, it will mimic R on her account as well, okay? So, what this does is that she will uh, click on my target, or hit, or assist my target. So if I have, let's say, I have this targeted, okay? I turn scroll lock on to make sure I'm broadcasting, and I hit R, she will hit that same target at the same time. And with the same spell. So, it's it's really simple. Um, now, there are a few other tricks that you can use. You've seen that I had the, uh, the uh, star on the target dummy. That's a raid marker. You can actually bind it in with a macro on her attacks. So that you know what um, enemy she's targeting. Which one she has set up. Now this works more for soloing. I'm not exactly sure if you can do it in five mans, unless you're an assist. But um, you can give it a shot. It's no big deal. So um, but yeah, that's basically your core attacking macros. Okay. So what we're gonna do next? I'm gonna turn off scroll lock, so I'm not uh, broadcasting. I'm gonna open up another macro, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna do a new one. Again, uh, I just like using the dot, but this one you can choose whichever icon you want. It doesn't have to have any one. I'm going to use the hammer. Okay. But the next one you're going to need is slash follow your main character. So mine's hips, and that's it. Okay. So then you're going to drag this onto a button on your second tune. So legs will have this on her button, uh, on a button on her bar. I bind it to tab. So. What I will do is turn on my scroll lock again, so I'm broadcasting. Okay. Now I'm going to run over here, but see she's not following me. Now what we're going to do here is, whoops. Okay. Before I do that, I'm going to turn off, click the move, because it's making it a lot harder. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So turn my scroll lock back on. So she's not really following me. She's not doing much. Okay. 
we're going to turn that on. Okay, so now we have scroll lock on. We're broadcasting. Okay, and she's still not doing much. Okay, so then we're going to hit tab, and she will automatically follow us. Okay. Now, the cool thing about hunters is the fact that you can target something while moving, and she will attack it. So, it's pretty sweet. Like, that's why I like hunters a lot more. And I see I bound in the text document space, so she will jump as well. So, it's good about, you know, clearing AFKs and stuff like that. But really, that's all you need. You need a, a slash assist macro, a follow macro, and two characters. Usually, you ident you just use two of the same. So, that's pretty much it. So, um, yeah. So if you need any more questions on macros and stuff like that, please leave comments. I will definitely get them into it so you guys can get this going. So I hope this helps, and have fun leveling.